sometimes our time step size is really small. And it's small because we have a few what I call bad elements in the mesh. Typically this shows up because we've had automatic mesh generation create the mesh. And it's put in some tiny little sliver elements to fill in the geometry. And those tiny elements are going to have very small size in them. And these, they're going to control the stability limit in the mesh. Now we'd like to be able to, to deal with this problem and fix it. The best thing to do, of course, would be go fix the mesh. But usually we don't have control of that. Uh, the mesh was generated automatically. It's really hard to generate the mesh. So we just have to accept the mesh as it is. But what we can change is, is the time step size by controlling it with a feature we've put into the code we call automatic mass scaling. Where in that case, what we do is we don't want to change the material stiffness because that would change our stresses and our strains in the material. But with automatic mass scaling, what we'll do is we will go and find the, the bad elements, if you want to call them that, and we're going to automatically increase their density so that their, their stable time step is increased and then therefore the stable time step for the whole model is increased. So the effect of this is going to be to add a little bit of mass to your model and I'll show you how we do that here with this simple uh, ship collision problem that I showed you earlier. The original model in this ship, if you look at the output that comes out of NEI Explicit, we print back to you uh, in the data check or the scanning of the data, the stability limits for the different parts of the mesh. And here we find that there are, there are seven different parts of the mesh, uh, shell and beam parts. The shells are the only ones that are really important here, so we'll look at the shells. And what we see is that the minimum stable time step is, is found in this part of the mesh that I've shown here in red. Uh, part ID 65, and it has a stable time step of approximately one and a half microseconds. If you look down here at this blow up of the hull of the ship, you can see that, that that part, those elements, are eight little tiny slivers of, of the hull, of the shells, that were created by a very fine detail in the geometry that was used to create this mesh. Now, what we do with automatic mass scaling is we simply tell the code, we say parameter auto mass scale, and we say, you know, I know that the minimum stable time step is one and a half microseconds, but I want to use a time step of 10 to the minus 10, 10 microseconds. So that tells NEI explicit to go in and find all the elements who have a stable time step that's less than 10 microseconds and scale it, so that, scale their density so that they scale up to a time step size of 10 to the minus 6, 10 point 10 to the minus 6. And this table here shows you exactly which elements were scaled. It turns out that all seven of these parts had some elements that were dis disagreeable, except the last one here at the bottom. It tells you it scaled 16 elements in this part, 26 in this one, but it also tells you the percent increase in the mass. And you can see for most of them, it's almost no increase. It's less than 1%. And this one critical part that has eight elements, our mass scaling actually increased the mass by 1,600%. But the total mass it added to the model was less than 5 one hundredths of a percent. So what we've done is we've created a little dense part down here that has no effect on the solution. But we've decreased our runtime by a factor of six and a half. This is a very powerful feature. It allows you to change the runtime from two hours to 15 minutes in this problem. 